I'm here today because uh, I'm going to start posting some videos of my viewpoints of issues we're dealing with in America. Uh, today I'm going to start out with racism. I got plenty more to talk about. Uh, I hope you guys can follow along and see my future videos as well. Um, so I got some notes written down here just to make sure that, you know, I'm covering the bases I want to. So bear with me if I, you know, get stuck for a second. I'm looking at the paper. I just want to make sure that I get my points out there and you guys understand where I'm coming from. Uh, recently, I watched a video called I'm Not Racist by Joyner Lucas. I think it's a great video. I think it's pure genius. I don't think that Joyner realizes how genius it is because if you watch his recap of the video, he kind of only sides with one. And I don't think, you know, that's not, that's not making the changes that we need. We need to be able to look at both sides and say, I'm wrong about this, but you're wrong about this, and we need to come together and make that work. So, I'm going to start here. Uh, let's see here what I got. Uh, so, I got, I was inspired to make this video, yada, yada. Uh, sorry, here, guys. Uh, so, let me try to touch on my viewpoints of racism and how I think that we can make changes. I grew up in a small city in northern state. Uh, it was primarily white people out there. Uh, during the last few years I lived out there, it started to become a little more diverse. So I, you know, I've come from being a, from the far white spectrum of things, and now I'm living down south where it's primarily black people out here, and I got to see, you know, their viewpoints on things and understand better where they're coming from as well. But. Uh, So let's start off with welfare. Welfare seems to be a fun subject. Uh, you know, a lot, there's all these jokes, you know, uh, how do you starve a black man, put welfare check in his work boots, yada, yada. The, you know, basically the image we're trying, we portray is that, you know, the African American community doesn't work. They don't want to work. They don't want to do better for themselves. Uh, that they just live off the system and take advantage of things. Well, first of all, like I said, I'm from, you know, a very small northern state. And I've seen plenty of white people doing the same thing. They're on the system because they're too lazy or, you know, they're not inspired enough to better their futures. And so they're sitting on the system. And to say that it's primarily black people, I don't think it's fair. There might be a higher percentage of it, but if you look at the U.S. population, there's way more black people than there is white people. So if there's the same percentage of white people on the system as black people, then the bigger percentage of people in general would be black people. So to sit here and say that, you know, black people don't want to go to work, they don't want to do their job, I think that's unfair and unjust. And, you know, honestly, in my time of being up north, I've been a manager the whole time. And some of my hardest working employees were the black people. And usually the ones who are entitled and didn't want to work for anything were the white people. I'm not saying that's the case in every scenario. Obviously, sometimes it's the white guy that works harder. Sometimes it's black guy. But to sit here and generalize a race based on that, I think, is ignorant. So uh, I don't think that people should be trying to say that they don't want to work. And I've seen them work. And as uh, to touch on another subject, is children. Uh, you know, you people go around and they're like, uh, black guys don't want to uh, take care of their kids and things like that. But some of the best parents I've met since I've been out here, out south, you know, some of the best parents are black parents that actually love their kids and they're still with their baby mamas and things like that. And I think that, you know, people, again, are just generalizing there's white people I know who aren't in their kids' lives at all, and some of them don't even care. They're just worthless. It's people in general. And to sit here and say that's one race versus another, you know, that gets away from the true important part, which is that kid's growing up without their father. It doesn't matter whether it's without their white dad or their black dad. These kids are growing up without their father, and we all need to be better about that. I mean, you're the one who laid down with the person to make the child. And so to just walk away from the kid and act like they didn't matter, it's not their fault that they're here. 
it's our fault because we laid down with that person and made that child. And so if you're not going to be involved, then at least, you know, be up front with it. Don't, don't hurt the kid because of what you're doing. But to get back to my point, that's not racism or that's not one race versus the other. It's racism to assume it that way. But like I said, you know, I've met plenty of good parents that were white, plenty of good parents that were black and, you know, other races. So to sit here and generalize it is ignorant. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is the cops. Uh, a lot of people are going around talking about the racism of cops, which is valid. There are racist cops who get away with killing black people strictly for being black. Uh, the reason I want to touch on that subject is that, you know, there's, I've seen some things and, uh, I don't really want to touch on it cause I don't want to offend anyone, but, uh, basically in general, I just want to say sometimes the actions that you make are what puts you in the situation you're in. And some of these things aren't acts of racism, but acts of self-defense. And there are cops that are putting down people for the color of their skin and they should be rightfully punished. But I've also seen people who went towards the cops and acted a certain way, and the cops defended themselves, and, uh, you know, next day everyone was screaming racism about it. The biggest thing about this is that when you're saying it's racism and it's an act of self-defense or something like that where the cops didn't have a choice, and you can see that and you can understand that you're taken away from these people who are actually being treated unjustly and i don't think that's very fair to be able to sit here and say this is racism because you know uh the cop did this or the cop did that uh i think i saw a video where a woman was saying that a guy didn't like her because of something i don't even remember it was it was weird but she said that the cop was racist because he didn't arrest the guy it was nothing to arrest the guy for he just Dis he said something to her that, you know, she was offended by, but he didn't harm her any, any way. He didn't call her any name or anything like that. And, you know, she's screaming about how it's racism. Well, that's not a true form of racism. What could the cop have done in that situation? Uh, but s some of the bigger problems that are going on that people are calling racism, and it's not racism, it's kind of like... You know, the girl who cried, or the boy who cried wolf, or, you know, a girl who pretends to get raped at school. All of a sudden, you start getting enough of these stories, and people stop paying attention to the true problem that's going on, which is the people who have legitimately lost their lives because of the color of their skin. But people, you know, especially of the white, most of the white people who don't understand are going to look at it, and they're going to see those two, three videos where... You know, in the case it was to protect themselves. And they're going to look there and say, oh, you know, this isn't really going on. People are just turning into something that's not. But that's clearly not what's going on. There's just enough people who are calling something something it isn't. And I, like I said, that's taken away from it. And I think that people should be a little more careful about that. Uh, I, I understand it's hard to lose someone. I couldn't imagine having to lose someone, especially in that way. Uh, even if it was them who started the incident, you know, if I had a friend get out and they started shooting at the cop, it's going to be hard to lose them. But I'm not going to sit here and say that the cop killed him for no reason. I'm going to say, you know, he was stupid to do what he did. And I wish it didn't happen because I missed that person. But like I said, I'm not going to blame the cops for defending themselves. You know, I might not be happy with the cop, but it's still self-defense. Now, to get off that subject, I know that's a little touchy one, and, you know, that might piss people off a little bit there. Um, so I want to talk about... Uh, I think... I don't know if I've talked about fashion yet. Yeah, I know, fashion with racism, but it's true, it's real. Uh, people are having problems because... Black guys are walking down the street sagging their pants. White people do the same thing, first of all. Second of all, uh, that's your life. That's your personal business. I mean, you're covering the parts of your body that need to be covered, then it doesn't matter. Most of these people are wearing basketball shorts or something underneath. So it's not like, you know, they're showing their ass for you to see. 
And so to sit here and criticize them because that's the fashion statement they want, you know, that's just stupidity and ignorance. You're going to live the life the way you want. Now, as far as the professional side of things, I don't think you should be going to work sagging your pants. I don't think you should go to work with grills in your mouth unless your type of job allows that type of thing. But, for instance, you know, I have an office job and I walk in with my pants sagging. That's not really giving me the image that I need to portray. So I think, and I've seen, I've had employees, you know, I I live down south and I've managed for over two years. I have employees that have sagged their pants and things like that. And I simply just say, you know, pull those up, you're at work, Do have your professional image. When you go home, who cares what you wear, who cares what you look like. But when you're here, you're trying to make that money to be able to have that lifestyle you want at home. So go there, look professional, be professional, and do what you can to keep your job because that's how you're paying your bills. And, you know, that's what's responsible. But in general, I think I got a little off topic here. Uh, in general, I just think that people need to come together and realize that some of the things that we claim or how the world is isn't really quite how we see it and sometimes we gotta open up our eyes a little bit more and get to know people a little better because like i said you know i met some amazing parents i met some people that i would trust with my life and things like that that are black and i'm not i can't sit here and tell you that black people as a general are a certain way and that's another thing is generalizing people like okay i understand that you might have had this or that happen in your life you know your grandfather or your ex-husband, whatever, might have served in a war and died because of, you know, people of a certain race. But to hold on to racism because of that, they're in a war in another country. Yeah, the other race is probably going to kill them if they have a chance. They're fighting. Or, you know, uh, maybe your mom got raped by a white guy and now you hate white people in general because of that. Well, I've never raped a woman and I would never dream of doing that. And it's the same way, you know, the vice versa. You know, yeah, a black guy might have raped a woman. But that doesn't mean all black people are going to rape someone. And to sit here and generalize because of something that a small sample size of people have done. Again, I've used this word a few times, is ignorant. To just sit here and say people as a whole are bad because of this small sample size I have. Why don't we get out there and try and see what people are. I'm not saying you have to go trust someone the day you meet them. But give people the opportunity to show you that they themselves or their race is not exactly how you view it. And educate yourself based on their different lifestyles. I mean, I'm in a state where, you know, there's gang wars and things like that going on. And so, yeah, there are those people that, you know, I probably wouldn't feel as safe around. But there's also those people that, you know, I know if I was in a bad situation, I could call them up. And they would have my back and they would protect me if I needed it. And so I think that we, as a population, need to come together. And, you know, kind of like to touch back on the video, to touch and talk about Joyner Lucas and I'm not racist. Go back there and really listen to some of the things that are being said and go and talk to each other and figure these problems out. You know, I'm, I'm not racist. I don't see why anyone would be racist. I can understand certain people. Like, okay, yeah, that black guy robbed me. I'm not ever going to trust him again. I'm not ever going to be around him. Anyone that I know knows him, I'm probably going to watch when I'm around them. But I'm not going to be like, oh, all black people are going to rob me because I got robbed by one black guy one time. That's stupid. So, as I've said, you know, I know I rambled on for a little bit, but hopefully this message gets out to people and it makes some sort of an impact and a positive. Uh, just, you know, get to know people and give people an opportunity. Don't judge them based on something that's tied to them. I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say, I can't trust this person because they're black or because they're a woman, because they're transsexual or something like that. It's, you're not even giving them a chance to prove you wrong. At least give them the opportunity. You know, if you if I were to sit here and say, 
every black person I ever tried to give an opportunity to prove me wrong. Again, that's not everyone. I'm not saying that you should go out and trust people, but you should give them the opportunity to earn your trust. And that's all I got to talk about. Thanks for listening to me ramble on, guys, and uh, I hope you subscribe and listen to some of my future videos. This is uh, the start of my issues I want to talk about, but, you know, it is kind of near and dear to me because I have a lot of good friends that are black, you know, and obviously myself, I'm of white descent. And I'd like to be able to see us all come together one day and be something better. It's sad the direction that we're going after all these years, you know, if someone in my family was around for slavery and they had slaves, I'm sorry about that. That's not how I grew up. I grew up to trust everyone, and or not trust everyone, but give everyone an opportunity and get to know them and to not judge people race based off the outside. Get to know the inside of someone and you might meet some great people of the different races. People who, you know, have learned things that you haven't had the opportunity to educate yourself. Get out there. Meet new people. Give them a chance. Thank you. Have a good one, guys.